Hey guys, this is Soulless Marte. I'm going to be giving you my first impressions in today's video. So, I've been trying it out in a virtual machine, so this is not representative of a bare bones install, and I've installed a number of programs which I'm going to show through uh, with you today. Now, I have done the uh, Soulless uh, review, another first impressions one in a virtual machine, uh, earlier on in this channel, and basically everything I say about it that doesn't reflect the um, desktop environment itself generally holds true. It's the same foundation, but this is just a second desktop environment. Uh, and I'm glad they actually decided to do this. Now, Solus developed Budgie, and um, Budgie is really good. It's something that I've been really quite uh, interested to see how it's been developing, and it's certainly a very, very promising distribution. Uh, some of you in the comments have actually been referring it to uh, GNOME done right, because, of course, the, the, no the GNOME sort of changed up the desktop paradigm quite a lot to something that looks a little bit more Android-y, and many people grew a love-hate relationship with that kind of thing. I've got to say, it took me probably about two years before I even got used to it, but I do actually think the GNOME layout is, is, is quite good now. That being said, of course, different uh, different strokes for different folks. So, um, this is the Mate option for Solus. It's, uh, as you can see here, it's a traditional desktop for advanced users and older hardware. And, um, interestingly enough as well, Mate is significantly better at customizing multiple screen layouts as well. So, if you've got like um, two, three, six monitors, um, you, you may not necessarily you may want uh, taskbars on multiple screens um, so that you don't have to drag your mouse across goodness knows how many monitors in order to open up a new application um, of course there are other options and other use cases you can right click on desktops and all that kind of stuff as well keyboard shortcuts or what have you but um, yeah when it comes to sort of gnome and cinnamon I believe or no Cin cinnamon used to have this problem um, but now they have uh, now they have sort of added this in as a feature but some desktop environments only allow you to set your um, uh, set your your task bars on on the primary monitor and then everything else is just sort of spans off and superfluous to that now that's quite a good way but I used to have a setup where my main monitor my primary monitor the one that was like right in front of the keyboard was a 1024 by 768 resolution it was really just the you know and, and and that led into the rest of the system which was a bit of a problem because it meant that um, m many applications would open up on the primary screen and um, and they would be bigger than that resolution or they might adjust to fit in that resolution and it used to cause a little bit of chaos so um, certain distributions I think XFCE uh, was uh, a certain desktop environments and I think XFCE was the one I opted for at that particular time allowed you to put taskbars all across uh, various different monitors um, and that really helped a lot so uh, Mate also does this it allows you to customize panels um, so if you if you want to go certainly down that road uh, also the thing about Mate I think is is worth saying is that it is a desktop environment designed to be run across multiple different kinds of um, operating systems whereas um, Budgie from Solus is is very much designed for Solus. Now that's not to say that Budgie can't strike out and obviously we had a look at Budgie Remix in Ubuntu uh, and that was a very um, interesting and, and I gotta say you know it, I, I thought that you know I'm really looking forward to seeing how the Budgie Remix Ubuntu does as well not the Budgie, the, yeah, yeah the Budgie. Sorry if I get Solus and Budgie mixed up from time to time as well um, I'm only human, I'm okay. So Basically, you do not have the plank um, layout at the beginning, right? But, um, is so I'm going to just check to see, is it installed? I can't remember. I'm not the biggest plank fan. But you could almost certainly install it and add it in and customize it yourself. But the default layout is one bar at the top with applica uh, applications, places, and system. You've got your windows and tasks also lining up across the top. And then you've got, uh, so it's kind of a very traditional layout. Um, so Mate, when I first came to Linux, it was well, GNOME 2, but basically Mate, that was the desktop environment that I was thrown into. I think it was Fedora that was my first, yeah, it was, Fedora was my first distribution sort of as an adult. I've tried previous distributions now, but Fedora was like the first distribution that I, I sort of committed to full time, and that was the, the, the thing that took up the entirety of my hard drive. And that had GNOME 2, and I really liked that, and I found that so easy just to, 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 to learn Linux, because... I mean, look at it, it's it's self-description, like, oh, I want to open an application, click on the applications menu, and it's all neatly done into categories, places, oh, I just want to open up my, uh, you know, something on the network, or something in the home folder, system, I want, you know, it's it's straightforward, it's easy, it's, 
you know, you, it's it's very difficult to mess up. You're not experimenting with unusual desktop paradigms like GNOME sort of kind of has done, even though I'd, I'd actually say that's somewhat user-friendly for people willing to adapt to new layouts of work. But I found Mar I found the Mate layout, I found this kind of layout, really useful as, as a newbie, even though it didn't mimic the traditional Windows paradigm. I think that's one of the big things that some people try and do. Uh, is they try and make their distribution look like Windows in order to try and entice Windows users over to Linux. But um, I think the kind of Windows user that's willing to go over to Linux is willing to adapt to a few new changes and where many buttons are is, is really quite a super, superficial thing. So uh, Mate allows for, for so much customization um, and I really do quite like it as an uh, as a as a desktop environment. I'm, I I got to admit I did not think it had le legs when it forked away, um, and I got a set because uh, I thought that it was just basically encroaching on on XFCE's territory. Whereas it is very similar in many ways to XFCE. There are ways that it, it does it is significantly different. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate uh, various pieces of software from various different toolkits uh, in order to show you uh, what kind of um, sort of visual coherence you can expect from Soulless Mate. So uh, here I've got the um, the software center and I've just updated it before I did today's video. Um, you've got uh, the home here, which has, uh, I believe your installed software, or you can actually find your installed software here. Uh, you've got third party software, so you can install uh, Google Chrome, Google Chrome beta, beta uh, the devs, Google Talk plugin, uh, you've got uh, Spotify. I know that one of you guys was asking after Spotify. Slack, Skype, which is um, an Electron app, and I'll show you that uh, a second because uh, that's going to be one of the things I'm going to be showing you. Teamspeak, WPS Office Suite, Viber. So uh, yeah, so you've got a decent amount of uh, third-party software here. Uh, and you can, uh, yeah, so i got to say, I'm actually really quite happy with the... Um, with the software selection in uh, Solus. So that's pretty good. Um, okay, so let's have a look at um, Caden Live. So Caden Live uses the Qt5 toolkit. Uh, and I chose the dark arc theme um, when I uh, was setting this up, I think. I usually do. Um, but this is Qt5, and it's obviously gone to the, the light theme, which I don't tend to mind. Uh, Qt integration with GTK desktop environments can, can be a little bit tricky. Um, I, I know that a lot of distributions sometimes don't always get it right. Generally, it's um, it's fixable, but um, but when, you know, like for, for people who, like the out of the box experience is important. Um, but it's not everything. So as you can see here, this is Caden Live. Caden Live actually is an interesting piece of software because you can actually customize, there you go, you can have the breeze dark theme and that works quite well. Uh, and this is just specific to the Caden Live. Um, this, you know, this is very specific to the Caden Live layout. So, and you've got, so you've got breeze, windows, GTK. So you can either use the GTK theme that you've got, uh, which I've found to be a bit hit and miss, or you can actually just use one of the native uh, Qt themes, which is good. Uh, I'm glad that they've actually put that in. Uh, I gotta say, Caden Live, um, it still crashes on me quite regularly. Well, I mean, regularly, semi-regularly. If I'm doing advanced stuff, it'll tend to, to crash, but if I'm just doing some basic editing, it'll generally be pretty stable. Um, some releases can be more stable than others with it, but it's definitely full featured and it's definitely the best thing Linux has got. And if you just save regularly and you you know allow the auto save feature, the auto save feature is really good as well. Um, it's definitely something that I, I recommend you guys try out. Now this is KeePass X. This is something that I use very regularly. It's a very important piece of software to me for security reasons uh, because a lot of my security stuff is done offline. Um, and I'd like to also just take this um, moment as a public service um, announcement. Uh, that um, offline storage is infinitely more secure than online storage. Um, I think if recent, um, you know, <laughs> uh, recent events uh, haven't made you reconsider how you're going to do security, um, I, I suggest turning on the news because uh, everyone seems to be getting hacked these days. So you know, keep your important stuff offline. Back it up. Make copies. Put it in different locations. Ask ask your parents to 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 save to save a backup, or or ask your friends, or you know, do something like that. Obviously, use encryption. Um, uh, uh, but but offline storage, there's a lot to be said for it. Don't don't just rely on the cloud. Don't rely because the cloud is just other people's computers, right? You you know, would you rather trust you like someone you know, or would you rather trust a company that's you know only out to make money? And and that's not a bad thing. Like that's what companies do. That is their job. Um, so you know, just just consider that 
it is it is you know most leaks are usually the result of a human error and that human error is often that they haven't ch checked up on their security sec settings they haven't done an upgrade obviously the dirty cow vulnerability is very very serious and, and, and worth noting so uh, a lot of my passwords are, are stored offline so that in, in password managers uh, so that I don't have to risk um, you know so that to minimize the risk so anyway a little bit off to off uh, off topic there this is a qt4 toolkit device i believe qt 4.8.7 so i've got uh, so on my main machine it's a pretty beefy computer i've got uh toolkit dependencies for qt4 qt5 gtk2 gtk3 that's a lot of dependencies to have for a distribution out of the box so they could either have chosen qt5 or qt4 to to, to, to include dependencies for um so so uh, you know, we we are asking a lot for KeyPass X to actually look great out of the box, but it, this does look not great. But it does work. It's not a showstopper. It's, it doesn't put you know put anything out. And to be honest, the majority of people that I I switch to Linux, they don't care too much about the aesthetic. Um, it's it doesn't usually come up in conversations. And usually when something like this happens, they're like, oh, okay, meh, doesn't bother me. It's it's practical. People, you know, the vast majority of people use computers to get stuff done, not to to stare at, and uh, you know, and, and most people don't browse Unix porn on Reddit and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, um, also check out uh, Reddit slash r slash Unix porn if you want some uh, inspiration. I'll, I'll see if I can remember putting a link to it down in the description. So keep uh, so Qt4 applications they look a bit, uh, they, they, you know, they look a bit like that. This is, I believe, GT. Yeah, this is GTK3. Um, I'm sure it'll be here somewhere. Okay, yep. So that's uh, that's GTK three, and this is Firefox. Firefox is as Firefox does. Um, I gotta say, the new versions of Firefox. I'm gonna have to be doing another battle of the browsers on Firefox one of these days because Firefox forty nine, I think, is maybe a little bit of a game changer, or certainly something promising for future releases so and also this is skype skype is an electron app for those of you that don't know an electron app is um it's a way to package web apps in linux distributions and of course windows and mac as well so it basically um is a way of accessing the skype website but in a way that's in a browser specifically designed to access the skype website this is actually from microsoft itself they're actually using electron apps to make Microsoft stuff work on Linux. And I think that's really quite interesting. That's really quite good. Skype is, you know, the, the sound quality in Skype is really good. And, um, and, and I, and, and I, you know, it, it does, it is unparalleled. I hate, you know, like as a Linux user, it's like, damn it, Microsoft really do have the edge on this. It's horrible, it's horrible. But like, you know, just Google Hangouts just doesn't get that same audio quality as Skype. Discord is good. So I might be, I might be looking at that now. Also, you know, let's keep it real. If you are a business person um, and you do a lot of business online, you're gonna need to do Skype. You're gonna like from time to time, Skype will will pop up. Uh, I my network for for YouTube uh, often use Skype in order to do uh, cons you know consultations and stuff like that. So as you can see, the Electron apps look generally look pretty nice. It's difficult to mess up Electron apps because um, the majority of them are just quite simply little windows into the web. Electron apps can use up a significant amount of memory because they are based on like the old Chromium code and they've just sort of wrapped it up and, and done it around. Um, so it, so they're certainly not lightweight apps, but um, but I found them to be quite responsive if, you, if, if your computer's got the memory to, to deal with it. So there's not really much else to say about this distribution. If you like Martin, you like Solus, this just slams them together and you've got something really quite nice. Um, Honestly, uh, and, and they're both GTK3, Mate, um, and I believe this version of Mate is GTK3 based. Does it say here? I don't know. If it isn't, it's certainly something that they intend to do in future releases, but I'm pretty sure that Mate, um, hang on, let me just check that about again. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was, is, is one of the, Either this version or, or or a version before it that actually moved to G to GTK three, but I'm sure uh, one of you guys in the comments will be able to clarify if at all if it's at all relevant. Overall, uh, I really like this. This is this is a um, a step in the right direction. I, I I'm not going to say whether or not I prefer it over over Budgie because I, I'll be honest, both are great. 
you know both are great flip a coin i don't know uh, some of you guys will probably have a preference for one over the other mate is more is is as it said on the website more likely to be a little bit more responsive on um on machines with um you know with less system resources but even then mate is not a lightweight uh desktop environment it, xfce is probably the heaviest of the lightweight desktop environments and you've got lxde lxqt i3 and all that kind of stuff you go down there uh, but um, it is it is a good balance like it does take into account system resources while at the same time offering a full featured desktop so like i say very very promising please bear in mind that this is the initial release now um solace is rolling now whereas it wasn't before but uh, so it's going to be um so it's going to you know it's going to continually uh, improve and uh but yeah this is this is good you know, like Mate is, is stable, it's full featured, it's great. Uh, Solus is new and exciting, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what this grows into. Like I say, it's one of the more, one of the most promising distributions out there. And the only thing, you know, the only concern that I have is keep this good thing going because it could be a serious challenger to Ubuntu and Mint that doesn't rely on a on a, on a distribution beneath it. That's really important. Like this is an independent distribution, and that means that the politics of you know, like in the same way that the politics of Debian can affect the politics of Ubuntu, and the politics of Ubuntu can affect the politics of Mint. Um, this is this is uh, this is a um, a slave unto no one. This is soulless. They, you know, they. I would expect that they chose to be an independent distribution to allow themselves that kind of freedom, and I think through that through that those opportunities that they've allowed themselves, they're going to get a distribution that does things in a slightly different way, but a more modern way in a slightly more tweaked way. And we've seen this through how they do updates as well. I think it's t it seems to have taken some inspiration from how Android do things, but hell, like if you've, there are over a billion Android devices that's worth taking inspiration from. So absolutely love Solus, love Mate. I love what they're doing. One small side note, if you have seen my mouse darting around the screen a little bit, there does seem to be something of a problem with the mouse acceleration in a virtual machine. I have installed Solus on bare bones machines before and that's not been a problem whatsoever. So I just think it's how VirtualBox integrates with the uh, operating systems. VirtualBox and, um, you know, like it, bugs like this regularly occur. So I, I don't think that it's anything to particularly pay attention to. Um, but yeah, that's about it from me today. This is this is really good stuff. Um, thanks for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and uh, you've been awesome. Take care now.